Hey, Coach Kathy coming to you today with probably the most important video I've ever done and I will continue to do. I've been in Utah for two years. I moved here back in July of 2013 after hearing that my stepmother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer one week after my daughter's wedding in May. I just felt God say, pack up and move. So I did that in July 2013 and about, I'd say a year later, I was able to, I coached volleyball in Washington for 20 years and I was blessed with the ability to help with the high school where I graduated from a volleyball team for the last two seasons when I've been here. And the first season was fine. I have RSC, also called Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, have had that since April of 1996. Due to a volleyball injury, it's a devastating disease that took me out of being an active mom, soccer player, uh, school nurse, all those things that ended. Um, but, you know, God's plan redirects us. So, um, so doing that the first season here in Brigham was, was great. Then the next year, my RSD was getting worse and worse. I actually didn't go to any of the away games this past um, fall. I just didn't have the energy. I was hurting bad and fatigue. Then in January, amazing things, not amazing, peculiar things started happening. I'd been having, prior to this too, I should be sure, I was starting to have chest pains and that was doing, mowing the lawn, a little tiny lawn. And it was the weirdest thing. It would double me over, I couldn't breathe, and then it would just subside. And that wasn't consistent, but it was persistent. So in January, I had a very inflamed toe that I was concerned about. So I went in to see my doctor and he was concerned that it was gout. I mentioned my check, chest pain. He did an EKG. It was abnormal. So he um, scheduled a stress test for me. I also said, oh, by the way, my elbow has been hurting and my shoulder has been hurting. Well, the shoulder has been hurting actually for seven years, but only during volleyball season and just after I'd been doing some repetitions with the with my teens and that was really in Washington I was more um, a part uh, I had my own team so that was more a part of part of the day-to-day -day practice so um, yeah so uh, the shoulder and the elbow so diagnosed with tendonitis and got an x-ray shoulder impingement so long story all these things started happening to me and in May, on May 21st I had surgery for my shoulder which actually I didn't have tendonitis it was actually due to the shoulder impingement affecting the nerves of my arm, which gave me extreme pain for the month prior to my surgery, May 21st. I am now six and a half weeks post-surgery, still having struggles with um, the pain I fell the other day, and I think I um, did something messed that up. So those, that's just kind of a backstory, because I was just so, it was like, why? And I even asked Dr. Semko, my, my orthopedic surgeon, he says, well, it age, but it's, but really, and I, I appreciate that. But when I think about it, what, two years? What's two years? I'm 57 now, I was 55. Well, the amazing thing is how God works. The first part of May, I was introduced to the concept of ionized water, reduced electrolyzed water is also what it's called, and was doing some research. Uh, Dr. Peggy Parker, who is a naturopath up in Spokane, I've been listening to her some of her blog talk radio uh, shows and got some books of hers and was doing some research. And it was two weeks after my surgery that I actually had purchased a book. It's time, Turn Back the Hands of Time by Dr. Peggy Parker, okay? And so there was reading and I come across this page. I know you can't see it. What stopped me in my tracks is it, with ionized water and electrolyzed reduced water, what it does is it helps us clean our body. It doesn't cure or treat, but what it does is it helps with the free radicals. It's got some some um, free electrons, let's say, that can take care of all those free radicals and leave no garbage or toxic things behind, okay? So inflammation, dehydration, and oxidative stress are the three triggers that causes actually pretty much all diseases we have. It's just wearing down our body. So I was reading that and I read the different things. Let me say, it's actually quite simple. The free radicals responsible for the destructive trio of oxidation, dehydration, and inflammation are simply atoms or molecules that have lost an electron. 
So then they're scavengering, trying to find it, and they just destruct our body. And there's more to that, and I won't go into it. So I'm reading what causes this oxidation, inflammation, and dehydration. Alcohol. Okay, some of these we can all control, right? Alcohol, sodas, air pollution, not so much toxins, chemicals, heavy metals, UV rays, x-rays, cell phones, computers, television, water pollution, GMOs. This one word took my breath away, fluoride. And I knew in an instant that it wasn't my age that caused all these things to start happening with my body. It was fluoride. Because see, in Utah, in Brigham, years ago when I was a kid, they started fluoridating the water. And they still do to this day. So what happening is I've been poisoned by the fluoride. Now I think you're probably going to go, oh my gosh, Kathy, conspiracy theory, you're going way too far. Really? Really? I want you to do this. Do this for me. I want you to check your water, quality water control. Every community, every water district has to have that yearly. Well, Brigham City's um, they, their most current one is 2013. So looking down, of course, there's fluoride and arsenic, which is byproduct, but this is it. So we all know, in fact, I called my daughter and I mentioned the thing about fluoride and she goes, I think it's in our, where we just moved to. And yeah, it's great for teeth. And it's like, that's, I mean, I, that's my thinking too. I've all along thought fluoride, no big deal. What's the problem? Oh my goodness. The thing is, is I've done more and more research and I haven't been able to do much because I've hurt so bad and I've had to rest a lot. But in between, what I've been doing is researching and researching more and more. And the fact is that we are not drinking sodium fluoride, which is the pharmaceutical grade. See, the thing is, fluoride, if you look at it on toothpaste, it says do not swallow. If you look at it anyway, it says do not ingest. So why are we putting that in our water? The thing is, as I was mentioning, sodium fluoride, pharmaceutical grade, that would be in the tablets and drops and the toothpaste, right? That's control. That's allowing parents to control if their children are going to have fluoride or not. And us and older people and low income and all races, okay, we can all make that decision ourselves. But what's happened is across our nation, we are being fluoridated and it's not the sodium fluoride. It's actually, and this is, this is it, it's actually the byproduct of fertilizer plants. So you see fertilizer plants, and one was even in Tacoma, Washington, where, which is where I live nearby, they produce pollution and toxic. And what they found is this hydrofluorosilic acid was being exposed to the area. So everything in that area was dying, everything. So they were then told they had to, they couldn't expose it. So what they did is they scrubbed it with water, with water they scrub it and collect it and put it into tanks and send it to our water treatment centers saying it's fluoride. When I looked at the Brigham City in 2013, and I want you to do this, they didn't say hydrofluorosilic acid. It says fluoride. But then when it goes over to the furthest right side, and it talks about what that is. One of the components it says is fertilizer product, byproducts. So you guys, listen to me. I'm not weird. I'm an RN, right? Westminster College, Salt Lake City, bachelor's uh, with school nurse, right? Health teacher, health educator in, those, in the school districts, um, volleyball coach, right? So health is important to me. I have not seen this research before, and I'm very frustrated. I haven't, but I believe it's perfect timing for you, God's perfect timing, and why I've been so sick, because it's my time to step up and stand in the gap and say, no more. We need to look at this and say, hey, it is affecting our whole bodies. We're not selective. We are forced. So I'm, I'm drinking fl filtered water. I don't know if it has fluoride in it. Bottled water, heck, that's even worse than tap water because of the plastics, and also we don't know what's in it. It could be fluoride. It could be arsenic. It could be all those things and we don't know and we're paying for it and we're paying dearly with our lives, our lives. So I want you to do one thing. I want you to check your water district. Check to see if they have fluoride in it. Research it a little bit more um, and, and let's, let's have a conversation. I welcome that. 
uh, pros and cons. So God bless you. I'm going to do another one later, a little bit more <laughs> specific. So blessing to you. Coach Kathy out. I will talk with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.